So how does all this circular motion tie into kinematics? Kinematics is the study of motion. So when we use the term rotational kinematics, we are simply saying motion in a circle. Once we have all the equations in order, linear kinematics is analogous to rotational kinematics. We just need to keep all the algebra straight. If we look at some of these values and compare how they relate to one another, we look at position in linear kinematics and it is abbreviated with an X. We are talking about where that particular object is in relation to some reference point. In rotational motion, we use theta, or the angle, from the reference point to describe the object's position. Velocity and acceleration are given specific designations depending on whether the motion is linear or rotational. Rotational motion uses the omega for angular velocity and the alpha for angular acceleration. Upon examining the equations for velocity and angular velocity, what we see is that they are both expressions for the change in position over time. In the case of rotational motion, the change in position is simply represented as the angular change. Acceleration is the same way. We take the velocity, or the angular velocity, and see how it changes over time. We can do the same thing with the units dealing with force. Force in a circular motion is described as torque, while the angular momentum is given the designation of L. Formulas for the forces equations are treated the same way. At first glance, this looks a little scary, but when you really examine what each equation represents, it does make a lot more sense. This can essentially be done with any of the kinematics equation. So let's try a few. A deep sea fisherman hooks a big fish that swims away from the boat, pulling the fishing line from his reel. The whole system is initially at rest, and the fishing line unwinds from the reel at a radius of 4.5 centimeters from its axis of rotation. The reel is given an angular acceleration of 110 radians per second squared for 2.00 seconds. Let's start with the angular velocity of the wheel. We were given three pieces of information, the radius of the wheel, the angular acceleration of the wheel, and the time. We know that angular acceleration is equal to the change in the angular velocity over time, and that delta omega is the same as the final angular velocity minus the initial angular velocity. Again with the algebra, we can solve for our final angular velocity. We started at rest, so our initial velocity is zero meters per second. This leaves us with the angular acceleration times the time, or 220 radians per second. Now that we know angular velocity, we can determine the linear speed of the line. Since linear velocity is equal to the angular velocity multiplied by the radius, we just plug in our knowns and calculate. The key here is to not forget to convert centimeters into meters, and we end up with 9.9 .9 meters per second. So then how many revolutions would our wheel make in this amount of time? Essentially what we are looking at here is how much distance is covered by the wheel in this amount of time. Remember this linear kinematics equation? We can translate this into rotational motion by substituting in the corresponding variables. We measure that distance covered in rotational motion in the angular distance, or omega. Initial velocity becomes angular velocity, which in this case we started at rest, so is zero and acceleration becomes angular acceleration. From here we now have 220 radians as our angular distance covered. So then how many revolutions would our wheel make in this amount of time? We know that one revolution is equal to two pi radians. To convert this, we take our number of radians, which was 220, and divide by two pi to get 35 0 revolutions. So how much line did we lose off of our reel? Well, the line coming off the reel is moving linearly in proportion to the rotational motion of the wheel. Just like our angular acceleration and linear acceleration are proportional, our linear distance is proportional to our angular distance.
And this proportionality has to do with the radius. The angular distance multiplied by the radius gives us 9.9 .9 meters of fishing line. Now just for fun, let's say we figure that our fish is swimming away with a fishing line and we apply a break to the spinning reel at an angular acceleration of negative 300 radians per second squared. How long will it take to stop the wheel from turning? We come back to our equation for angular acceleration and in this case rearrange for time. The wheel has stopped spinning, so the final velocity is zero, with the initial velocity of 220 radians per second. We were given the acceleration of negative 300 radians per second squared. Working all this out gives us a time of 0.733 seconds.